an actual house, it's not an actual club. It's just actual stories that are actually fun. And they're written by kids that act just down with their mouths. And it's time to begin. It's the Story Club Hey, everybody, and welcome to the Story Clubhouse. In case you don't know, here at Young Storytellers, we go into public schools and mentor young people to write their own original stories. I'm Jason Manzoukas, and I'm going to be your host for today's episode. It is a doozy, all right? As you'll see, these stories are the purest expression of our students' imagination and creativity. They write every single word you hear tonight, and then we have actors come on and act those out. I've been an actor in a bunch of the Young Storytellers' biggest shows and a couple of these story clubhouses, and I gotta say, these stories are amazing. I've done so many different varied roles. I've had an absolute, some of my favorite performances and uh, roles that I've had in the last bunch of years have been written by these amazing young people. And I'm excited for this program because I'm gonna be honest, I need the work, you know? I need the work, I need, I need these young people out here writing more scripts so I can be performing more roles like the one I'll be doing tonight. Uh, let's get started. Uh, tonight, our story is Abe and George Pizza Attack by Eleanor Blute from Broadway Elementary School. She was mentored by Joshua David. Eleanor and Joshua, can you please come on stage? Which means turn on your cameras so everybody can see it. All right. How's it going, guys? Eleanor, how's your summer going? It's going good. Yeah, what have you been up to? Anything exciting? How are you staying busy? I've been reading. I've been doing what are you Girl reading? Scouts. I'm Ooh, reading Girl Scouts. A, I'm reading a, a graphic novel. Okay. Do you want to tell us what it is? Do you want to give out a recommendation? It's called Big Nate. Okay. Are you enjoying it? Yeah. I'm also I've also been reading a bunch of graphic novels uh, that have been really fun and very exciting. Uh, Joshua, how did you get involved with Young Storytellers? How did you come to find your way to this organization? So I actually found out about it like almost two years ago through one of my screenwriting teaching assistants who recommended I'd, you know, use my kind of passion for writing and telling stories and use it to help these kids out and just also learn from them. It's funny though, because I started out as an actor. Yeah. Um, acting in these big shows and stuff. I didn't start mentoring until like last year. So it's been an awesome experience though. And it's one of those things I look forward to literally every day. Although oh, I'm not bet. mentoring right now because yeah, yeah, COVID, you know. <laughs> of course, of course. El Eleanor, when you were coming up with this, I know you've, you've, you've worked on this a while. What's the title of your script? Just, I know I said it earlier, but let's get it again from you. What's the title of your script? Eve and George Pizza Attack. All right. And was this, is pizza a big thing for you? Are you a big pizza fan? Yeah. 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 Not bad. I mean, I'll be honest, like a perfect summer night to me seems like pizza and a graphic novel just hanging out. Like that sounds like a pretty good night. Not bad. Not bad. All right. We're going to let uh, Eleanor and Joshua go backstage for a minute and we're going to bring out the actors who are going to be performing Eleanor's story here today. Actors, can you please turn your cameras on and come on stage if you don't mind? All right. So uh, I'm going to ask you guys a little bit to introduce yourselves. Rob Cordry, who are you playing in this performance tonight? I play um, former president of the United States, Abraham Lincoln, uh, now in his uh, old age. Yes. And, uh, and uh, it's, it's probably, a role that is very personal for you. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was. It's get, uh, getting to. It's hard to even talk about. I, I don't want to uh -huh. cry. Um, oh, please do. Please cry. <laughs> please cry. It would really, it would really make this it really land here. You know, really bring emotionality to it. Um, this is a. Uh, this is so great. I'm very excited. <laughs> yeah, Abe. When will I ever get a chance to play Abe Lincoln? 
Oh, who knows? But, you know, after this, perhaps all the time, you know, Maybe. I mean, the, the question for you really is, will you outdo Daniel Day-Lewis in his performance in Lincoln? We yes. will decide yes. after the no, I, show. We can decide now. No, let's decide after the show. Chris Red, <laughs> where are you? What's going on? How are you doing? Who are you playing? I am down south in Mississippi, a lot of S's, and I will be playing my dream role of George Washington, and I am literally what he looked like. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't mind, Chris, can you tell us a little bit about the nonprofit work you've been doing around the protest recently that's incredibly impressive? Well, uh, I, I was on my way down here and uh, the, when the protest started, and so I was looking at the protests because I wanted to be out there, but I felt bad I couldn't. So I was like, well, what can I do? So I started a, a mutual aid fund, uh, the COVID protest relief fund to help out protesters and, and uh, who, who contract COVID and just like help out with bills and just try to have some relief for people who are fighting injustice. So. It was amazing. like, made me feel, feel good. I could, I could do something when I, while I'm here with my high risk dad, like watches Westerns, so. Ah, watching Westerns. What, any, any faves so far? Uh, I mean, he's been watching Westerns so old that like some scenes are just a guy describing what's happening. It's just, they're just so <laughs> terribly old, like a man on a horse. <laughs> it's, uh, but he loves every one of them. He's seen, I, he's just diving in. I got him a fire stick and he hasn't left the couch. Oh, that, there you go. That's perfect. All right. Uh, Kalena Renoa, who are you playing today, if you don't mind telling us? Hi, I am playing the choir and mucus girl. Oh, yeah, mucus girl. All right. How's your summer going? What have you been up to? Summer's great. I think the highlight was going to the Black Lives Matter LA Pride March. It was amazing. Uh, wonderful. That's amazing. Yeah. And then Vera Lim. Who are you playing and what do you do at Young Storytellers? Hi, uh, I will be playing the narrator and I am the Young Storytellers training and curriculum specialist. So I get to train volunteers like Kalena and Josh, um, as well as work deeply with the curriculum to teach students what I believe is really important, which is telling stories and raising their voices. Awesome. And then uh, I'm also gonna be in uh, performing a part and I am playing Pizza Dude. Don't worry about it. It's a part I was born to play. Okay, so Eleanor, can you please come back on stage? Joshua, you can stay in the green room if you don't mind, but do us a favor, please don't trash the green room. Please don't trash the green room. <laughs> Eleanor, we want you to stick around and watch because you're the biggest star here tonight. This is your story, so enjoy it. All right, is everybody ready? Let's do the show. Woo! Abe and George, Pizza Attack. Two guys, one pizza, one problem. Written by Eleanor Blute. Interior, a trashy apartment in the city, 346 AM. Abraham Lincoln and George Washington sit on a disgusting couch while watching the History Channel. Abraham Lincoln is an old dude with a dirty, dusty top hat. Seated next to him is George Washington, 169 years of age with a wooden crutch. Abraham Lincoln's stomach growls. He picks up a rotary phone. <sighs> hey, dude. What's the cheapest pizza you've got? Well, we have one for $150.99 in Monopoly money. Hmm. Abraham Lincoln looks at George Washington. They shrug. Fine, 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 Hey, when's that pizza coming, dog? Well, the dude on the phone said two hours. Now, we wait. Exterior, the same apartment, 3.48 a.m. The pizza dude knocks on the apartment door, a true tween. He's decked out in a unitard and braces while using his Snapchat. He knocks on the door while on his phone. It's open! Come on in! The pizza dude struts into the apartment. Here's your pizza. Now give me my money. I need to pay my mom for my phone, dude. 
dude. Sure, dude. George Washington gives him the money. The pizza dude gives the pizza and eagerly takes the money and sprints away. Aha! The pizza's here, my dude. Bring the pizza here to the couch, dude. George Washington brings him the pizza. They drool at the sight of the box. Before they open it, a choir begins to sing. Oh. Hallelujah, hallelujah. In angelic voices, all in anticipation of opening the pizza box. Abraham Lincoln opens the pizza box. Why are there mushrooms on the pizza? Dun, dun, dun. What are we going to do, yo? George Washington sits down to think, stroking his beard. Um, I have an idea. Let's go chase the pizza dude. Go get your walker. Let's chase him. Exterior, trashy part of downtown Los Angeles, 4.52 a.m. Abraham Lincoln and George Washington are walking very slow. Cars honk behind them. A random person in a car throws his phone at George Washington. The phone hits him in the leg. He uh, trips. Uh, Abraham, help me up, bruh. Abraham bro. Lincoln attempts to help, but trips over George Washington and the wind blows them away. The choir blows. The two guys fly across the city in a dramatic fashion. Exterior, top of Teenage Dirtbag Pizza Restaurant, 5.02 a.m. Both Abraham Lincoln and George Washington find themselves at the top of a building with a neon sign that says Teenage Dirtbag Pizza. They slide down a vent and find themselves in the corner of the restaurant where they cannot be seen. Teenagers are everywhere in the restaurant on their phones taking selfies. Behind the cashier table are two teens. One of the teens is Mucus Girl, a girl defined by the snot consistently dripping from her nose. The other teen is none other than the pizza dude from earlier. <laughs> I think we're at the pizza shop, dude. We made it. George Washington looks around. Uh -huh. I think you're right, Brosis. I see pizza dude who dipped us off. He's right there, I think. Well, what, what should we do? They both look at each other. Attack! Attack! The most slow motion attack in the history of America ensues. George Washington attempts to charge but trips over his wooden cane. Abraham Lincoln throws his hat at the pizza dude and knocks his phone out of his hand. The phone breaks in a dramatic moment. The other teenagers pay no attention to it, still taking selfies on their phones. The pizza dude looks down at the shattered screen on his phone. Uh, dude! What's your problem? My problem is you. You look familiar, dude. Yeah, we're the dudes from the pretty apartment in the city. The pizza guy sits down to think. Huh. You put mushrooms on our pizza, you fool. Well, uh, that's, that's your fault. Now give me money for breaking my phone. Abraham Lincoln and George Washington look at each other as if a new idea had just popped into their heads. If, okay. if you give us a free pizza and a coupon, mm -hmm. we'll give you a new phone. The pizza dude smirks. Mm. Fine. The pizza dude gives the coupon to George Washington. So, uh, what kind of pizza would you like? George Washington and Abraham Lincoln look at each other. No toppings. Only cheese. The pizza dude goes back and makes the pizza. Interior, teenage dirtbag pizza restaurant, two minutes later. Here it is. 
George Washington and Abraham Lincoln open the pizza. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Finally, a cheese pizza with no toppings. You did it, pizza dude. The pizza dude smiles and begins to cry. <laughs> Everyone in the restaurant, from Mucus Girl to the choir that randomly <laughs> appeared throughout the show, gather around Pizza Dude, George Washington, and Abraham. Hey, dude. Nah. Clap along. Hey, dude. In that moment, everyone learned a valuable lesson. Be specific when ordering pizza so everyone will be happy. The end. All right. Amazing. Thank you, everybody. Joshua, uh, can you please come back on stage if you don't mind? We'll say goodbye to our actors. That was amazing. Did you guys all think that went well? Everybody's singing was impeccable. That was the best singing I've ever heard in my life and been a part of. Right? I Beautiful. think we could get a deal. I think we could record an album. Honestly, why, why are we not dropping a mixtape right after this? Like, let's, yes, yeah, Chris, the answer is yes. Yeah, but the important question is, Jason, did, was I better than Daniel Day-Lewis? You know, oh. this is, I mean, it's such a great, Rob, thank you so much for desiring an answer to this question. And I think it's on everybody's mind, you know, having seen both Daniel Day-Lewis's performance as Lincoln in the Steven Spielberg movie and your performance as Lincoln here today, I think we can unequivocally say it goes to Daniel Day-Lewis, you were the the hat was just too small. The hat Fair was just enough. too small. It you know. Also, tiny. also, where's the beard? Where's the beard? Where's the sh where's the chin strap beard? What, what's I going on, bro? The, I had the opposite. I know. You, you I went for a, you went for a thin mustache. You look uh, like a villain in one of Chris Chris's dad's westerns. This but is. But I've a, still been. I've been making my. I've been making my family call me Abe for a week, so that's like Daniel Day Lewis. Oh well, I insist on having everybody in my house call me Pizza Dude. Yeah. yeah. Uh, sadly, I live alone, but it's a. <laughs> It's a, it's a cacophony of voices inside my head. Uh, <laughs> Eleanor, let's have you uh, unmute yourself. What inspired you to write this script? Was it perhaps a mistaken pizza order? Yes, it was. What? Oh. Amazing. Do you hate mushrooms on your pizza? Yeah. <laughs> yeah? Do you, are you a no toppings pizza person? Are you all about just a plain cheese pizza? Kind of, yes. Yeah. Not bad. I, I listen. I agree. I like a plain cheese pizza. You know, and no thank you. No mushrooms. None of the other stuff. I don't need it. Keep it simple and cheesy. I love it. Uh, did you enjoy that? Yes. It was super yeah. Funny. Oh, good. Joshua, uh, if I can have you turn your mic on for a second. Uh, so, what was it like working with Eleanor, uh, developing this story and so forth throughout the throughout the process uh, of mentoring her? Oh, uh, I can say that in my long 20 years of living on the planet Earth that I've interacted with a lot of people, but she's one of the most genius people I've ever interacted with. And it's crazy that I've gotten more inspiration probably from her than from so many other people I've interacted with. And it was really awesome. She's going to be awesome someday. And everyone watching this, remember the name Eleanor Blue. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, listen, it is synonymous with uh, the presidential pizza, but uh, uh, appreciation, which is, uh, you know, and also, uh, you know, that our presidents are willing to fight for, you know, what pizza they want. It's like, uh, it's pretty, pretty amazing. Uh, all right. 
Let's have everybody go backstage, if you don't mind. A big hand for Eleanor and for all the actors. Amazing, amazing work, everyone. Uh, I'd like to now, if you don't mind, welcome to our stage Netta Most from Young Storytellers and Kalena Renoa, one of our actors tonight who is also a Young Storytellers head mentor, uh, to give us a bit of an update on their programs and how you can support uh, this organization at this time. Welcome to you both. Thank you so much, you. Jason. Dude, thank you. That was Amazing. fabulous. I'm gonna and turn. I'm gonna turn that. my thing off right now. I'm gonna turn my thing off. I've got more okay. crying. I'm still in the crying <laughs> mode. <laughs> All right, sounds good. Hi everyone. I'm Netta Most. I'm the community relations strategist at Young Storytellers, and I work very closely with our most dedicated group of volunteers. Those are our head mentors. Each year, more than sixty. Mo Sorry, each year more than 60 highly trained people get to teach our programs to young writers, help recruit mentors and actors, and serve as chief cheerleaders for our students as they write and develop their very own story ideas. Did I mention they are volunteers? Um, yeah, they're amazing. Just last night, we had a big celebration virtually on Zoom. Um, to honor the, de the incredible contributions that they make to young storytellers. And I'm so thrilled to be joined tonight by the amazing Kalena, who was not only fabulous in the story you just saw, she is also one of our most veteran head mentors and mentor and actor and was the recipient of the Andrew Barrett Mentor of the Year Award last year. So ladies and gentlemen, Kalena. Thank you, mahalo Netta, love you to pieces. Hi, I'm Kalena Renoa. I have been head mentoring at Melrose Elementary since 2009. And this spring, I had the pleasure of completing our program virtually on Zoom. It was so important for the students uh, to be able to continue our program uh, with all the changes. And I'm so grateful for all my mentors and my school staff liaison and the students at Melrose Elementary. So, and thank you to the YS staff for providing this amazing opportunity. Great. As you can hear, Kalena and our entire volunteer community are, have been working really hard to raise the voices and the stories of young storytellers, and you can help. So if you like the story you saw today, if you believe in our mission and our work, and if you want to keep making an impact in these times, um, and forever, please consider making a donation to support our programs. Yep, um, I also want to highlight that for a donation of $5 a month, you'll get a special, you'll, you'll join a special group of donors called Story Club. $5 might not seem like a lot. Oh, we have a guest. <laughs> uh, $5 might not seem like a lot. <laughs> but it adds up over the year. And that means, oh, sorry. <laughs> Live Zooming, people. Um, <laughs> but $5, seriously, really do add up. That would be $60 a year. And, um, you know, if 10 people watching this right now would take that on, that would mean $600 for young storytellers, which is a lot and would do so much to help support our programs. Um, I personally am a member of the club and I love getting the story every uh, month into my inbox. I get to read a brand new story, an original awesome story written by one of our young writers. And I really highly encourage you to join me and be part of this awesome, very cool club too. Uh, the donations are a sustainable way for us to support, uh, for you to support us throughout the year. So join Story Club an easy way to do so much for the students like Eleanor and like all the students that we work with and yeah it's great beautiful you can also support us by buying young storytellers merch there's some fun stuff in our store so check it out oh I got a cute mug and I got a cute tote oh cute is this so cute <laughs> So now let's have Jason come back on stage to tell us what we have to look forward to in the next episode of the Story Clubhouse. Oh yeah. Okay, so just to reiterate, the Story Clubhouse will be closed next week because of the 4th of July holiday. It's a summer vacation of sorts here at the Story Clubhouse. But when we come back on July 9th, we have an exciting story lined up for you. It's called Don Falcon's Pizza by Diana Moda. It is a story about pizzas. Go.
girl power, and mean people. You won't want to miss it. Uh, as always, you can check out our website to find coloring pages and previous recordings of the Story Clubhouse. And of course, go ahead, Colette. <laughs> A huge thank you to everyone who makes this special series possible every week. We love you lots. Thank you. We are so grateful that you all joined us here today. But before we wrap up, let's bring everyone back on stage. Eleanor and Joshua and all the actors, just to say goodbye. Everybody turn your cameras on. Yeah, congratulations to you, Eleanor, great work. Thanks to all the actors for giving your time. Thanks to everybody at Young Storytellers. Yay, thank you so much, Jason. Thank you for being here. Uh, Jason and the cast, you were wonderful. Please keep writing. Joshua, please keep mentoring. Um, it's so great to have you. And before you go, storytellers want to encourage you to keep doing your part to support the Black Lives, Ma Black Lives Matter and anti-racism movements across the country. You can join the protest safely, wear a mask, reach out to your elected officials, donate to social justice organizations, call out racism when, when and where you encounter it. This is the time to make meaningful change. Stand with us in solidarity with all Black people, Indigenous people, and people of color across America. Next week, when we remember our country's independence, let's make the real story, the story of our real founders who proclaimed that all people are created equal and should be treated in that way. Our work is far from done and please make sure that is true. Thank you and we'll see you on July.